So um, you were rowing with James Cracknell, who was, mm -hmm. I think he was, was he 45 or 46? I can't remember how old he was. 46 or 47 even. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he might have, uh, I think he had his 47th birthday like in that year. Wow. So tell, tell us what that experience was like rowing with Cracknell. Oh, it was pretty, pretty epic, I think. Uh, like James is, is, is awesome. And, you know, every, I heard that he, I got read newspapers that he's coming uh before the before that before i came um and like everyone knew that he's he's uh he's joining the team and um uh, like i don't really know like how it's gonna look like because you know a person who's you know who's a legend who does so many amazing stuff yeah. uh like you you don't really know what to expect like uh i could definitely see like someone being like very you know uh detached to with, with, with that yeah like, or like I just didn't know like James and what kind of guy he is, um, but very quickly like he uh, he just like such a good guy and he blended in the team so well. I remember like even when I was racing in Plovdiv uh, and he was there commentating, uh, like he left me like some some note by the board wishing good luck. Oh yeah, uh, it was very 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 nice. And then in in Cambridge, like you know he he just was always so fun. Like he we were always crack some jokes. Uh, and you know, some guys and team were were so much younger. Like I was already a little bit older. I was doing my <laughs> masters, but some guys were coming in as as freshers, and they were like nineteen years old. Yeah, it was a huge, huge gap. Uh, but James was great with that. Like he would, you know, always go with us like to some team events. Like even if they were like a little bit, a little bit, you know, yeah. um, a little weird. <laughs> like he would you know, go out to some you know, bar with us, like have some dinners with us always, uh, always like, you know, trying to have fun also and, and really blend in the, in the team. And I think he did, he did uh, great with that. And he had a hard year also with getting some injuries, um, like also going through like some personal stuff. So yeah, uh, no, I really appreciated like him just being there and, and like doing so well with the whole team. And like, he, you know, he would have some guys over for dinner sometimes, um, I remember like even even for me when uh, when the heating in my my place wasn't working as well, he was like, "All right, it's fine if you want to, you know, I have a spare room, but if you want to stay like this, yeah. this is totally fine." And so just you know, little things like that was yeah. really uh, was re was really really nice. Wow, you know, in in the boat race, I was going to ask you, how does the nerves on the start of the boat race compare to any other race you've been in? Um, well, it's definitely a lot of pressure. Because you you know usually at the races, like there's not that many people watching you. <laughs> like you know there's this helicopter flying around. There's all these people on the on the banks. Uh, it's broadcasted through you know through uh, through BBC. Like it's uh, it's all over uh, you know the, the TV. Um, so it definitely adds some pressure because you're not used to that. And you know it, it also at both races it's very easy to to mess something up. So even the start like when you have your your oars uh, like like this because yeah. of the team. so like it's very easy to uh, make some mistake and then you like have the oar clashes like it's so much stuff going on there um that uh, you, you never know what's going to happen in, in, in the boat race pretty much like it's you know you know that what you can do as a boat but then there's also the factors from outside that can also affect the result uh but uh for us and for me it was great to have some guys who did the boat previously yeah uh, like like, like Dara and, and freddie did the boat before and they kind of told the rest that we should just approach it you know not stressing out too much but um actually also trying to enjoy the experience we have because it's pretty much one you know, once in a lifetime experience to uh you know being yeah. some center of of like, attention for for rowing it's not very very usual and we should just try to enjoy it as much even like at the start line take one minute like look around you know look up like the helicopter look around, look yeah. around us and just like, experience it and enjoy it and that really helped uh, and also our team was so you know close together and we had we just had so much fun together that yeah. uh, you know someone was always like making some jokes in the boat even like even at the start line like james was always like uh loosening up loosening up the atmosphere a lot so yeah, yeah. Um, so that took took a lot of the stress and pressure off and the end, we're just, you know, group of guys and we just like had a great time together.
And you were sitting in the stroke seat because that was that was quite a big call, I guess, because Freddie stroked the boat the previous year and I thought he did a great mm-hmm. job. And so uh, how was it for you in the stroke seat? Um, like it was was pretty stressful, definitely. Uh, and um, they put me in stroke not like probably like a month or two months before the uh, the race. Uh, yeah. I think it was like right before our first uh, first uh, race with Leander, uh, because before like we were having some issues, like uh, the boat wasn't always going that well. Yeah. Mm, and and yeah, then we just tried something something different because we were on like pretty similar lineup for the most of the year, and then uh, like it was it was going okay, but we you know we had some there was always like new guys also from uh, the US from like other places, and it's hard to uh you know get together like immediately so so just looking for some new things and just tried it and like it you know we did well at this one or at this race with Leander and decided to like see how it is like keep keep that and uh and it was you know it was it was fine. Yeah 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 now yeah. one of the things I wanted to ask you about was um was your dad it's Miroslav isn't it is uh, Yaroslav Yaroslav and yeah. and yeah and it's clearly uh, it's it's not unusual in the sense Oli's idol is coached by his father, but you've had this relationship with your dad for for many years, where he's been your coach. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I'm thinking congratulations for the two of you working out that relationship because you know I think it I'm thinking it's quite a big deal being coached by mm-hmm. your dad. Yeah, it is. It's uh, definitely can be hard at times, uh, especially when things are not going. Uh, as well, like there's some tensions and frustrations. So it was also good to for me to have um, like five years where I work with different people. Yeah, uh, I was part of a bigger team, and um, uh, you know, didn't wasn't always like only uh, only with my dad. Uh, but like, he's really good. He's really good coach in terms of like he had good, good. He always has good ideas, and he always like looks what what other people are doing and like learn tries tries to learn learn from uh, the experiences. I was looking for some innovations, also like great in organizing stuff. And, and you know, the things I did last five years, uh, I would definitely wouldn't be able to do it with, with anyone else. Really? Uh, well, yeah, because, you know, he would come, uh, sometimes he would uh, come to the U.S. like over when we had our break in, in the winter and like we would just like train uh, like in the single for a little bit and or before the World Cup in 2016. Uh, so like no one could really do that uh because you know people are like he's not really a, a paid paid coach yeah uh, so like he doesn't have big obligations back home whereas you know it just takes a lot of a lot of time and effort and he's like very passionate and like in love with, with rowing uh so <laughs> I like, it, uh, like he you know he wants the best for me and yeah uh, and i really appreciate that yeah so so the two of you i know you you committed to Tokyo how do you see your future after Tokyo in terms of the sport you mentioned you know that what you're having the qualifications and and looking for a for a job and and so on where where do you see yourself after Tokyo Natal well I'll definitely you know for now I'm just thinking about next year yeah Mm, but uh like of course like it depends how it goes uh partially like but uh I also want to um like you know, I'm I thinking about maybe getting some job or internship just to get some experience also. Uh, maybe for a little bit and then like see what's what's gonna happen. Although there's like not much time also later on, uh before like the another another Olympics. So uh definitely we'll have to like wait with uh, any plans for later. Uh, but definitely have a lot of uh lot of, of thoughts and options uh, yeah. going, going through my head also. So I guess would you think of working in Poland or in Europe or in the States? Well, it depends. Like everything, you know, depends on the situation and uh, the possibilities. Also, uh, yeah. it's hard to say for 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 this moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, another thing I wanted to ask you: there's been some recent changes in the rowing program for the 2024 Olympics. Yeah, for uh, the rowing, right? Yeah. So what what do you think of that? Well, I. I would really like to try it one time. Uh, <laughs> just last uh, last week, there was this European challenge uh, in Italy, uh, and there was like one 
uh, what do I call it, for my club racing. Uh, and it uh, looks really hard, to be honest. Like when I saw some videos, it's like yeah. uh, just through the waves. It uh, looks very, very hard. But it looks fun. Like when you watch it, I watched like one of the sprints. Like it looks very exciting. You can like see the whole race. Like it's like quicker and yeah. Uh, like it's interesting. Like I, I just wonder, you know, how it's going to be, uh, how it's going to work out for for the next Olympics. If you know, if people from Rome will move towards it, or if there'll be like new, you know, yeah. new people starting from Costa rowing, uh, or if it's you know, it's going to be like more specialized also in the next next years, like some some other training. Because I think now there's a lot of rowers just finish their season and then they would just go uh, for the coastal uh, coastal champs and they would like most likely win or get a medal there. So yeah. I wonder if that's gonna also change if you would need to like do, for example, whole year only on preparing to that. Yeah, that's yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be really interesting. And uh, I just want to talk about the, the equipment you rode in. We mentioned the, the gates already, but have you, you rode in an empacker? Yes, uh, yes, now I rode in an empacker. Uh, I, I rode the PDP last couple of years. I was uh, very happy with that. Uh, but then we also had some like travels with. So the Philippi boats were owned by the federation. Yeah. And they wouldn't let me uh, row in the boat. Uh, like for example, like when I was training back home, or yeah. or like when when we had last year we had Polish championships after after the worlds, and like they wouldn't they wouldn't give me to throw at those championships. So then mm -hmm. I'll have to switch to my old Empire boat, like literally one week before the race, which wasn't ideal. Uh, because we had an old older Empire from, from my club. Uh, so then like just to get some more you know independence, uh, like my club uh, helped me buy a new a new single and we just went with Empire because we had one uh, one already. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it was easier when there's when there's two boats. And no, it was, and I really enjoyed it. Like it's, it's a great boat now too. Yeah, and uh, you know, you you've been in the sport for so long. You you must have come across so many people, and and maybe had you know some some role models in the sport. Those you you look up to and admire. Well, you definitely, uh, you know, I always followed this single skull racing, and um, when I was when I was younger, uh, you know, I would always watch the. Uh, the competition between like Sinek and, and Drysdale, yeah, and, and Tufte, like it was just so exciting to watch. Um, like it went on also for so many, so many years. Uh, and like they really pushed, you know, pushed the, the whole field, like the you know, the what this racing had becomes become. And I remember, like, you know, when I was younger, it must have been like 2007, 2008, I was like wrong a little bit already. And I was just watching those guys. So like, wow! Like, you know, how am I gonna ever, you know, get even near those, those guys? Or like, just uh, like, what, you know, you know, how does it even happen? Uh, like, I was, you know, very, very, always like, very, very impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, then, uh, and then, actually, one year after uh, 2013, when I mm -hmm. won the juniors, um, it was also actually like a great, really great story. Uh, so Felipe invited me to uh, to test some of their boats yeah. in the fall, uh, before the Silver Skip Regatta, and uh, I was it was East Oak Chop was organizing that, oh. and then also uh, Mahe Dreisler was also there, just like testing some new boats, uh, and then uh, Rob Brass from Netherlands. So it was oh, like wow. uh, they just invited me like to Italy for a little bit, uh, and I could just you know meet meet Mahe like. Uh, in East Oak and just hang out with them for, uh, for, for a little bit. So it was for yeah. me, it was like one of the best experiences. I was like really wowed and, and I couldn't really talk that much because my English was, wasn't good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Maha was really nice, nice to me. And, uh, uh, I was asking him a lot of questions. So like he was very patient and, uh, and it was just, uh, it was an amazing experience for me as, you know, just a junior, uh, just to, just to meet. You know, meet people yeah. like that, like Easter and, and Mahir was 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 amazing. Oh, fantastic! And you know, one name uh, comes to mind, um, and I remember him winning a medal in, I think, the Barcelona Olympics. Polish scholar Katian Broniewski. Yes, yes. So, and, uh, so I'm so he's pretty active. Uh, I think he's actually working in the um, kayaking accounting federation. Uh, but like I talked to him uh, from time to time. 
like I was able to meet him a couple of times on some occasions before, uh, just asking about his experiences. Um, and even now, like we, we talked a little bit, so, uh, it's great to, you know, to also talk to him and, um, and yeah, he's different. He's very well known in, in Polish rowing, uh, for that, for the medal and singles. Um, and just, you know, being, being with the sport and, uh, yeah, and since, since then we didn't really have, um, a single star in Poland. Uh, so, so yeah, it just, uh, feels like I'm following his footsteps a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully. So, Natani, we, we've chatted. I can't believe it's been nearly an hour. Have, yeah, have you it went, went by so quick. Uh, yeah. Have you had your breakfast yet? No, 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 not yet. We'll probably get some breakfast now. Okay. So, we're gonna. I'm going to say bye for the live broadcast. And thanks, okay. everyone, for tuning in. It's been great to have your company. And it's yeah, it's great, great. great to chat to you. Like, you know, I always uh, knew your voice from uh, from the world growing commentary and uh, enjoyed it very much. And I think we met one time at Hello Charles. Yeah, that's uh, right. So yeah, it was, it was really nice, great to, to chat to you. And thanks for you know, thanks for having me here. Brilliant. Bye everybody. Bye.